<clears throat> right before we dive in here, I just wanna say a quick thank you to Storyblocks for sponsoring this video. I have been using Storyblocks on almost every single project I've put out for the past few years, and it's because they have everything from gorgeous stock footage, sound effects, graphic elements, motion and after effects templates. Storyblocks is the mortar that binds my bricks together. In this metaphor, the house is my video and the bricks are the scenes and sequences I shoot and the mortar, well, the mortar is Storyblocks. With their super affordable subscription packages, you get unlimited downloads to use for personal or commercial use. The library is absolutely enormous and they're adding to it constantly with over 1 million assets that's a lot of additions you can put on your video house recently storyblocks hired six different lgbtqia plus creators in order to help build out their footage libraries as part of an ongoing initiative called restock in order to bring authentic representation to groups and communities that traditionally haven't seen that and they're doing the same as well with black, indigenous, and people of color. So if you're looking to learn more about the Restock Initiative, and I'd encourage you to check out some of those footage libraries, or if you just wanna learn more about Storyblocks' unlimited all access plan, click the link down in the description or go to storyblocks.com slash jesse driftwood. Thanks Storyblocks. Let's talk about cameras. I know you've heard this said a million times before, but there is no perfect camera. In fact, I'm sure I've been the one to tell you that. You've just got to figure out what the right camera for your needs is. Because after all, they're just tools. But unfortunately for me, just knowing that you need to choose the right tool for the job doesn't necessarily prepare you to choose the right tool for the job. Which is why I think I'm here to say, I'm switching to Sony. I think. Like, Probably. It's gorgeous, ain't it? That's gorgeous. <laughs> I've been shooting on and testing out the Sony FX3 now for about two weeks. Not because Sony wants me to review it and not because I even want to review it, honestly, but because lately I've been wondering if it might be the perfect camera, not just for the videos I want to make, but how I enjoy making videos. I kind of want to dive into three of the biggest reasons for me making a switch that not only did I not anticipate making, I never even really wanted to make this switch. I'm gonna oversimplify things a little bit here, but the best way I could describe Canon's video system is that they have two different streams. They have their cinema line, which have fantastic image quality, really great specs, and just, just overall fantastic cameras. And then they have their mirrorless cameras, which are small and fast and get decent-ish image quality, but they're really lacking specs. They're not giving you anything even close to what you'd get out of this. I, I know I have an M5 here. I would say the same thing is true for the um, R, R5 and R6, which is that they are fast acting, they have great images, but they do not have the features that you'll get out of their cinema cameras. You're still gonna have to deal with record limits, with overheating, and with missing features that I wish were there, like a better log profile. And while the C70 has all those features that I'm looking for, it's lacking the portability and ease of use that I loved about Canon's mirrorless cameras. Not to mention also that it's kind of a bummer that the autofocus on this was a downgrade from the R5 and R6, so, it's a bit of a mixed bag, this camera, honestly. Whereas this camera right here, the Sony FX3, is smaller than my R6, even with the lens, and yet gives me 90, 95% of the functionality of the C70. I mean, just look at the size difference here. We've got the C70 with the 20 millimeter F1.4 on the speed booster to give us that full frame field of view, next to the FX3 with their 20 millimeter F1.8 G lens. I know this isn't apples to apples, but in the end, you're getting a very similar image between these two, 
with very similar features. But the difference that I would say is the C70 is a cinema camera pretending to be a mirrorless camera, whereas the FX3 is a mirrorless camera pretending to be a cinema camera. Is that fisheye lens? Are you using a fisheye lens? There's a bird right there. You ready? Yeah. I don't need anyone to shoot for me. Climb back up and climb down. Okay, okay, yeah. And okay. cinematic. Uh-oh, my feet are wet, <laughs> uh-oh. The second reason is something I've been coming to terms with over the past couple years, which is I'm just not a photographer. I mean, I'm not a photographer in the way that I once was. There were several years where our photography was my primary passion. It was the thing I went out to shoot just for fun all the time, but as the years have gone on, I've grown more and more fond of video. And now when I see things, you know, out in nature in public and I want to shoot them, my brain defaults into what kind of sequences could I shoot here and not what kind of photo could I take right here. And I bring this up because the R5 and R6, while very capable hybrid cameras, they're still more photo camera than I realistically need. And so having the photo capabilities built into the FX3 is like more than enough for me. This battery's at zero percent, and I only got one from Sony, so, uh... Yo, I mean, Jesse, isn't that wild? That's wild. The third biggest reason that I want to make this switch is lenses. When I first made my Why I Still Shoot Canon video, I made the point that the lenses Canon was putting out showed a dedication to the RF mount, and that they would eventually put out better cameras. The problem is that they never put out a full frame camera that really took advantage of those lenses on the video side. And so even though the C70 is an RF mount camera, my 15 to 35 IS, which is a fantastic lens, is no longer the lens that I bought. You know, now it's a 22 to 60. I don't know the math offhand. And so like I mentioned before, I love shooting wide and because there are no RF wide angle lenses for the Super 35 sensor, you have two options, either, you get some old EFS lenses and put it on a Canon adapter, which I've done a lot and works fine. Or you go the route that I ended up going, which is the Canon Speed Booster to give you a full frame field of view, and then you can use your full frame EF lenses. And while both of those options work just fine, and for a lot of people that have an investment in EF or EFS lenses, great. But as someone who had been investing in RF lenses, it was kind of a bummer and it meant going forward, should I be investing in RF or EF lenses, because I don't want both of them. Now here on the Sony FX3, Sony has just a myriad of lenses, wide angle, mid angle, long angle. <laughs> Over the last year or two, the lenses they've been putting out have been super intriguing to me. I think it really started with the 24 millimeter G Master because I loved, loved the 24 millimeter L EF lens. What a great lens. But the G Master version was so small and light, and it was something that I had always wished Canon would do for the RF system, but at least up until now, they haven't yet done. You know, right now I'm using the 21.8, this is the 14 millimeter 1.8, and obviously it's got the ND issues and whatnot, but the point is, they're making small, full frame, wide angle lenses, which is really something that's quite important for the videos I like to make and the way I like to shoot. And so after considering all these things, I decided to tweet out, like, I'm thinking of moving to Sony, convince me one way or the other. And after this tweet, somebody from Sony or a Sony marketing agency, kind of confusing, reached out and offered to hop on a Zoom call with me and just talk through some of their options and see what they had that might work for me. I, and the truth is I already had a pretty good idea of what would work for me, but uh, I was still very thankful for the connection and that they sent me some stuff out to test and play with and see how I like it. And the truth is, after two weeks on the Sony FX3, I really love it. And I love it more than I thought I would. 
And part of it is that it's just refreshing having a camera that fits in any backpack with a mic attached to it, but still gives me most of the features and image quality that I loved out of my C70. I don't think this camera is for everyone by any means. Like it's barely a cinema camera, but it's the camera that can shift gears into each different way that I like to shoot more than any other one. This camera is equally comfortable here in the studio being charged off of USB-C, running a shotgun mic straight into the top handle as it is out in the woods on my one wheel with a Rode Video Micro on top of it. It can do both things. And I think that's what's most interesting to me. I actually have to send all of this Sony gear back today, which is a bummer. Um, but if you have thoughts on whether or not I should switch, let me know in the comments. I know there are people that like to comment about gear, so. to my YouTube channel. It helps my kids have food to eat and and I would I haven't really thought beyond what I was going to say here. Just <laughs> going to do that again. No, I don't care. <laughs>